Good evening, Trinity. This is Jennifer for evening prayer on Thursday, October 29th. And today we are honoring saint and some martyrs, James Hannington, Bishop of Eastern Equatorial Africa and his companions. And they died in 1885. Oh God, make speed to save us. Oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone. And its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever on those who fear him. And his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant, and remember his commandments and do them. The Lord has set his throne in heaven and his kingship has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, and all places of his dominion, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lesson today comes from Luke chapter 11. When he went outside, the scribes and the Pharisees began to be very hostile toward him and to cross-examine him about many things, lying in wait for him to catch him in something he might say. Meanwhile, when the crowd gathered by the thousands so that they trampled each other, he began to speak first to his disciples. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, that is, their hypocrisy. Nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed from the housetops. 
I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that can do no more. But I warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When they bring you before the synagogues, the rulers, and the authorities, do not worry about how you are to defend yourselves or what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what you ought to say. Here ends the reading. The Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now the story of James Hannington and the martyrs of Uganda. So they were killed October 29, 1885. Among the new nations of Africa, Uganda is the most predominantly Christian. Mission work began there in the 1870s with the favor of King Mutesa, who died in 1884. However, his son and successor, King Wanga, opposed all foreign presence, including the missions. James Hannington was born in 1847, was sent out from England in 1884 by the Anglican Church as missionary bishop of Eastern Equatorial Africa. As he was traveling toward Uganda, he was apprehended by emissaries of King Mwanga. He and his companions were brutally treated, and a week later, October 29, 1885, most of them were put to death. Hannington's last words were, Go tell your master that I have purchased the road to Uganda with my blood. The first native martyr was the Roman Catholic Joseph Mkasa Balikudimbe, who was beheaded after having rebuked the king for his debauchery and for the murder of Bishop Hannington. On June 3, 1886, a group of 32 men and boys, 22 Roman Catholic and 10 Anglican, were burned at the stake. Most of them were young pages in Mwanga's household, from their headman, Charles Lwanga, to the 13-year-old Kitsio, who went to his death laughing and chattering. These and many other Ugandan Christians suffered for their faith then and in the next few years. In 1977, the Anglican Archbishop Janini Lugu and many other Christians suffered death for their faith under the tyrant Idi Amin. Thanks largely to their common heritage of suffering for their master, Christians of various communities in Uganda have always been on excellent terms. The Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of James and the martyrs of Uganda and all your saints, entrusting one another in all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your saints, whose faithful witness by your providence has its great reward. We give you thanks for your martyrs, James Hannington and his companions, who purchased with their blood a road into Uganda for the proclamation of the gospel. And we pray that with them, may we also obtain the crown of righteousness, which is laid upon all who love the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.